with their latest champion rework posted, Riot has shown off the new Tristana. Showing off a, an official Yordle oriented design, they have changed her explosive shot from a single target damage magic burn spell that applies grievous runes to a debuff she throws onto her enemies, which will explode after a given time period. However, she can increase the damage of the explosion by attacking the enemy up to four times, which currently doubles the damage, and then detonate it either with a fifth auto attack or by rocket jumping onto them. Her rocket jump has also been nerfed, losing half of its free damage, but it doubles the damage with its scales with the same buff that is to explosive shot. In addition to this, for the first time in Tristana's kit, she now has an AD ratio, and it is respectable, scaling from about 70% up to 110% currently on the PvE, and that is on her explosive shot. Riot has suggested that this rework will help bring in the late game Tristana factor. ADC Tristana in the late game is a menace. She boasts the highest consistent range of any hyper game AD carry. And we'll compare the hyper AD carries in a minute. She also has the largest gap or escape, I should say, not a gap closer, though she can use it like that. She has the largest jump of any ADC in the game. That's not disputable. And she also has an AoE knockback spell, which can knock back multiple enemies. She is easily the most safest ADC in the game to play when it comes to the late game. Riot's justification and focus with this rework is to tackle those aspects by introducing a new part of her kit, which encourages her to go in to deal more damage without touching those parts. That made her strong as an ADC. It's really funny to me how Riot identified her strengths in the weight game. Oh, she's got attack range, she's got this jump to get out, and she has a knockback, so she could just GTFO. GTFO, they actually use that terminology. And then they say, with this rework, we wanted to cement her as this all-in daredevil AD carry. I'm like, so you basically said, we fixed her late game by not touching her late game. In fact, they've buffed it, because you have to consider the point that, like I just mentioned, they, for the first time in her kit, she now has an AD ratio, and her single target spell, which became meaningless in the late game, in fact, um, some laners, some players, I should say, in the professional scene, would put three ranks into the explosive shot, and then get maxing the rapid fire to get to the maximum attack speed buff that they could, as fast as they could. But now that they've given her an AD ratio... With an AoE spell, Tristana can do even more damage to the whole team at her safe range and still has her tools to keep her safe. Tristana has the best self-peel of any ADC in the game, and that is... It's appalling to me from a design perspective. Now, there are aspects of this rework that I do like, and I'll get into those within a moment. So, uh, let's compare Tristana's kit to the other late-game hyper carries. Okay, so I'm talking about uh, Vayne... Kogma, Jinx, and Twitch. Those are the, uh, with Trishana in there, those are like the five main hyper carries. Champions who, the whole purpose of playing them is to farm up and get to the late game. Um, champions that didn't make it in there that you could, that you would almost hard keys for. Caitlyn, she's more of a mid-game power spike. Draven doesn't scale as well as they do because, um... He just doesn't. He has his passive to get to an accelerated late game if he snowballs really well, but that's not it. Ash is more of a utility ADC, and in a team composition where there's just several gap closers, um, her immobility hurts her, whereas if they lack the gap closers, then she's back to her old kiting days. Uh, Varus is utility. Callista, it's, um, she's utility as well, although her late game comes more from her just being safe with her constant mobility rather than just like her hyper game damage. But Jinx, Kogma, Twitch, Vayne, Tristana, they all have really high DPS in late game, and that's the point of it, is for that big moment for them to clean the teamfight, win it single-handedly, carry the game. Okay, so um, let's talk about uh, safety in terms of, like, escapes. All right. Kogma and Jinx have no escapes. They have to burn flash. They have no extra mobility. Jinx has extra mobility from her passive, but she has to get a kill and her assist first. Kogma doesn't have any escapes. He's immobile. Twitch has his invisibility, but that hardly works as escape anymore since Riot has since 
nerfed it so that if you take damage, you cannot be fully stealthed within six seconds. That l makes it so that Twitch is basically confined to using his stealth as the engage tool that it is currently used for. Um, Vayne has her high mobility with Tumble, which can get out of some things, allow her to dodge some skill shots, but it's not. it ha lacks the same disengage property as Tristana's 900 range jump does. Again, to give you context on this, the only ADC whose kit that I know of, right off the top of my head, whose escapes can, Trist can exceed Tristana's is Ezreal. His E has a 475 range, while Flash has a 400 range. He combines the two, he gets to 875. Actually, that doesn't even... Tristana still outranges Ezreal using his summoner spell and his escape by 25. And that's without her using her Flash. That's... Let's put that number for you. Let's, let's put that into perspective for you. Um... Mm -hmm. uh, who is the other ADC, Jinx? Pogma, Tristana, Bane? Okay, yeah, I went over all of them already. Okay, so Tristana wins and escapes. Uh, Self-peel, so not escape measures. Jinx has her snare, but that takes a little bit of time to set up. It is great for zoning, and it is a powerful tool. Um, Twitch has a slow, that's it. It's on his W. Kogma has a slow. That's it. It's on his E. Pretty negligible, really. Vayne does have her Condemn, which can be turned to hard CC with a wall. But unlike Tristana's knockback, it only hits one single person. Now, it is on a shorter cooldown than Tristana's ultimate. But Tristana's ultimate, and I'll, again, outrange is Condemn. And overall, when it, you need to use it, is more useful than Condemn in a disengaged situation. Tristana's knockback scales from 600 range at level 6 to... Uh, 1600 range at max rank in the ultimate. Not 1600, 1000 range. So, Tristana can create a 1900 gap distance between her and her opponent in the late game. Now, if you do that, you're pretty much so far removed from the fight, you're not doing anything at all. But this can help you escape picks that no other ADC would be able to without burning your flash. Throw flash in there, you're at 2300 distance. That's insane. That is insane. In terms of safety, again... And if you force to use that, less effective. But the enemy has to play so differently when they're trying to gank a Tristana. Like, even in the early game, 900 jump, 600 knockback, 1400 distance. Like, if Jarvan EQs into Tristana, she'll, she can bust Tristana away. If he flashes into ult, she can rocket jump away. And then Jarvan has nothing to show for it, for example. And he's one of the best engagers in the game. Whereas, against Kogma, Twitch, and... Jinx, they have to burn Flash. They have to burn Flash in that case. Unless their support makes a play for them. Tristana doesn't need their support to make a play. Tristana can take care of it herself. Vayne, she, could, she doesn't necessarily have to burn her Flash because she could tumble out of the Cataclysm, but she could still be locked down in it. She could condemn him away. So Vayne is a little more uh, safe, but not as guaranteed as Tristana. Okay, so the aspects now of Tristana's kit, if you recall correct, if you recall... She was nerfed after her dominant run at Worlds, losing uh, attack speed on her Q, a bit of a nerf to her base scaling attack speed as well. She Her old cooldown was increased as well, so that it was up less frequently, making her more vulnerable after she used it in the early game, all which were good changes. But she's still a strong pick. She is. In fact, if you look at the LCK, something I outline in my Gold Pretend article, she still is played dominantly, and she's even been played more in the current season, and she's still picked up wins. She's picked up losses as well. But there is a, one particular series where CJ Entis had played her in week three. I'm going to find the matchup real fast. And she got one kill in lane against Corky, and the whole team was able to snowball that one kill into a victory. Solely off of that one kill. Now, any hyper carry and any team with that as focus as CJ Entis did would, would have been able to snowball like that. But Tristana is still at a point where she is capable of doing that. And unlike her other hyper carry counterparts, she is still the safest ADC to play as. Now, range. That's a factor I forgot to talk about. Vayne is the worst off because she has the shortest range out of all of them. Uh, Kogma has 500 range base, but he's able to jump up to 710 range with his W fully ranked. Jinx is able to go up to about 700 range with her max ranks Q using her fish bones. And then Twitch's ultimate gives them the highest range of the game at 850. However, all of their 
bonus range are gated. They are available earlier than Tristana's. Tristana has to wait to level 18 to get to her 703 range, while everyone else's range is available at level 6 for Twitch, level 9 for Kogma, and Jinx. I don't know why I have four fingers held up. But those are all gated in some way. Jinx doesn't benefit from the DPS boost that she gets from her Pow Pow passive, which is a stacking attack speed buff, because Fishbones just doesn't work with that. She gets increased range and AoE damage, but she loses DPS with it, and it costs mana to shoot each missile. Twitches is his ultimate, so it's gated to about every minute and a half about, and it only lasts for about 8 seconds. Kogma is gated on a to 7 seconds duration, about a 15-14 second cooldown. Tristana's, once she gets to her level 18 state, has a constant 700 range, which, by the way, 703 range, by the way, she casts her E from and her ultimate from. Her 1000 range knockback ultimate can be cast at a maximum addition of 703. That's a really rough point, and I am letting a bit of my, um, I'll say disdain for Tristana's show right here, but... Arguably, though, let's talk about things that are positive with the rework. First off, Tristana's landing phase is effectively shit. She lost half of her damage from free poke. Losing the burn on her E, as well as the grievous runes from it, really hurts Tristana's landing phase from it. However, actually not however, that's the improper word, she has to commit to extended trades to get the same amount of damage that she was doing before. However, a competitive play, this is negligible because you can just lane swap her out of those lane matchups to begin with. And frankly, if you happen to beat someone in lane with Tristana, by all means, you deserve it. Go Snowball. You deserve it. I will admit that. Now, those aspects of Tristana's kit, again, she's seen massive success in the LCK despite her nerfs, and she's had success for those reasons. Again, she doesn't have an AD ratio, right? Hasn't touched the aspects of her range... Her ultimate knockback, her jump range, all those aspects which ADC Tristana's relied on haven't been effective. If you're trying to tell me that you fixed ADC Tristana's late game by taking out some free damage on her W and getting rid of her E, which fell off in the late game, and replacing it with a better spell for an ADC, and you call that fixing the issue, two aspects of her kit which she never relied on, you changed those but didn't touch the core of it, and you said you like addressed the issue... That is bullshit. I will say that frankly here. That is just flat out fallacious, unreasoned crap. It is. Now, again, I do like the rework's direction. Um, I do, I haven't said this in the article, but I do think it spells the end of A. Petrosana because now her E damage doesn't scale off of um, A. P AP as well as it used to, and it doesn't scale with penetration, magic penetration anymore because it's physical damage. And Deathfire Grass is being deleted from the game, so that was an item that Ape Tristana relied on heavily as well. So, unless Ape Tristana is allowed to exist as a weird hybrid, like attack speed AP with Nasher's Tooth uh, build, I think we won't see Ape Tristana's anymore. And this solidifies Tristana's identity as an ADC, which makes her easier to balance. Because now, because she has a focused role... You're able to play around that instead of having to be like, oh, they got these two aspects of the kit. It's a vein similar to Scion's rework, when before you could build him AD or AP, and you're using half of his kit, while the other does nothing in either case. So... Um, I, I failed to look up the LCK game with CJ. I'm actually pulling it up right now. I'm bad at multitasking. As it was, looking at week two... I thought it was week three. Oh, there it is. Now it's coming up. Give me one moment. So Tristana, even up to this point, no, not coming up yet, was played to great excess when CJ Entis ran her. Space coming out big on it. Suddenly he's just playing like a god. Trying to find... It doesn't look like that they have the... Um... Is this the preseason? No, this is the season, okay. I can't find the game statistics, but Tristana is still being played effectively within the competitive scene. And my prediction is that she'll make a return to the competitive scene with these changes, but she could not. Perhaps there's a new rise of 80 carries that just completely dwarfed Tristana. Um, right now, the, with the nerfs to Infinity Edge, 
losing 5% crit chance, while Fam Dancer gained 5% of that crit chance, we could see a resurgence of Vayne, because Vayne could build Blade of the Rune King first into Fam Dancer, so she gets more crit chance by building Fam Dancer second, which Vayne's can do. Vayne's are prone to do. Um... Sivir is coming up really big and well, and perhaps Sivir is enough of a lane counter to Tristana, especially with a nerf Tristana laning phase. Perhaps teams will consistently be able to call out lane swaps whenever a team wants to do so with Tristana and punish them for that pick, and she won't be able to snowball. But maybe it could also work as well. Right now, a lot of things are up in the air with Tristana. I think that there's potential for her to come back into the game stronger than ever before. And that concludes this segment. Again, if you would... Go ahead and support me. Go see the Go Pretend article. I have a lot more structure to this, and I even look at her performance in the LCK preseason in depth. So thank you guys for coming aboard. This is CD Mangaka.